morning here in uh, Mondorongezi, Zimbabwe. And today we're just showing a part of the progress that we have made. Uh, this is our kettle head. And like you say, it's a typical morning. And what we do is so we feed our animals with silage. Um, so it's grounded silage and we put uh, molasses within it. Um, and this helps to improve the appetite for the animals. Uh, as you can tell, uh, the animals are all feeding before they actually go, go out into the pastures for grazing. Uh, this actually gives us an opportunity to do some of the piece of work uh, on the farm. Uh, while everybody else is vested on um, either maintenance on the farm, we should make sure that the animals are well fed in preparation for going out into the, to the pastures. We've got a couple of, we have got a few paddocks um, that we sort of uh, drive our animals into. And this is all in essence to make sure that uh, they are not mixing with the other heads from the nearby farms, which could create its own problems with regards to, uh, to diseases like uh, theliosis, hot water and botulism. So we try by all means to try and at least separate our animals and ensure that uh, we are following uh, um, practices that enable us to control a curry site. Um, as you can tell, some of our animals are looking in good shape. We are currently in May and we are aware that we're going into the dry season. But this is going to create its own challenges with regards to feeds. We are going to be supplementing our feeds with various other uh, crop residues on the farm. Uh, like I said, using uh, salt, salt blocks, uh, mineral blocks to try and sort of enhance their body shape and body weight and just their general weight. As we move to the other parts of the farm, we've got our goat pen. We've, at least we just started last year and within that we've got at least uh, 25 goats now and uh, uh, one boar, one boar goat, a male one. Uh, we are looking into maybe just uh, having pure uh, goat breed, uh, boar breed rather. And this is one of the practices because of the body weight. It is quite marketable and uh, there's a quite high demand of this sort of people who are doing breeding. So it's an, an opportunity for us to try and enhance our farming practices. As we move to the free chicken, range, uh, free range animals. There we go. Uh, this is Overlook Farm. I know I've talked about this in a long time. And this is our water reservoir. Uh, we try and use our rain harvesting system. This is part of the rain harvesting system that was have been planted. But then we're gonna continue to make improvements. We have got quite a, as you can tell from far, far, out, far afield, we've got a maize crop that is just ready for harvest. And we're gonna be creating a maize barn there where we're going to put the maize before it, it is shelled. We have also acquired a silage machine, a grinding mill, so that we can uh, grind our maize, also create silage for the animals. So it's all looking good and it's all looking brilliant. Thank you for your time.
<laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed what you have seen so far. Now we are going to be talking about the benefits of using supplements and within food for, uh, for animals. In particular, we are talking about some for the trees that can be found within uh, Zimbabwe, for instance. Most cattle in Zimbabwe exhibit poor condition for a period of about half a year in the dry season. This poor condition of animals results in low market weights and less income for the farmer, as well as poor reproductive performance of the cows and small head sizes. The poor performance of animals at this time of the year is mainly as a result of low nutritive value of dry pastures. In addition, the presence of a large number of rumen protozoa reduces the protein to energy ratio in the absorbed nutrients. The reduction in protein to energy ratio is through uh, the protozoa engulfing rumen bacteria, thereby reducing their availability for intestinal digestion. Secondly, the retention of 70% of the protozoa in the rumen making them unavailable for intestinal digestion. Thirdly, the ability of the protozoa to digest particulate protein in the rumen and converting the protein in amino acids to volatile fatty acids with a net loss of dietary protein. There is a study that revealed the benefits of removing protozoa and maintaining a deformed in the rumen and summarized them as increased use of protein nitrogen in the rumen, increased availability of uh, dietary protein for in in the intestinal digestion, increase in production of microbial protein and in proportion of the rumen microbes flowing in the intestines. The reduction of ciliate protozoa numbers from the rumen improves productivity of rumens feed on fiber or of fiber with soluble sugars. This is due to an improvement of protein to energy ratio in the nutrients absorbed by increasing the amount of bacteria and sometimes data amino acids are available for absorption for the small intestines. The increased ratio of amino acids to volatile fatty acids in the absorbed nutrients leads to a better performance in deformated animals. Despite the benefits to be gained from deformation, the only technique available at farm level is the use of single drench of vegetable oil, traditionally used by farmers, say, in Vietnam, and in some parts of uh, Thing on Mai. And uh, one of the studies that I have um, come across determined the effects of dry supplementation uh, using the dicros touchy scenario on live weight gain in rumen protozoa. This is a plant which is also known as Mopangara in Zimbabwe. That's one of the names that is similarly it is called yeah. the local names in Zimbabwe. It is apparently a rich in protein. It is a leguminous plant, which is also good for fixing nitrogen in the soil and also used to try and preserve uh, soil erosion, prevent soil erosion. 
As you can tell from the video, these animals really love this plant. And you can tell how this animal has just been following me. Uh, and while I'm sort of giving him this, uh, this, this plant. This plant is rich and it helps to sort of uh, control the protozoa within the, the rumen, which in turn helps uh, to increase the role increasing daily weight gain. In, in addition to the crude protein effects, the ability of to increase the rumen will play a destiny role in increasing the daily weight. And not only that, it also helps in the interaction with the animals. They become more friendly, yeah? and they become more, as you know, kettles are known to be very clever animals. Um, yeah, there's a video that I've sort of discussed about it, talking about how we interact with animals and how much contact uh, they benefit from. And we know that people have been I mean, harmed by animals, but then this, in a way, this plant, because they love it so much, it helps uh, the interaction between the the, the 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 owner or the people who are handling them. Uh, but you also have got to be careful that they, uh, these are animals and they, I mean, they, they could be very dangerous if not managed well. So one of the reasons I sort of um, I came up with this uh, video is to allow people to sort of look around their communities to see if there are any fodder plants that they could use to enhance the health of their animals. Uh, studies have been conducted and every year about 73 to 81 percent of leaves fall during the winter season. Large quantities of nutritious frost killed leaves and fruit from browse plants including this plant, um, Mpangara, are later destroyed by bushfires before animals can consume them. If these valuable crude protein resources that also had the advantage of reducing protozoa numbers are harvested and safely stored for feeding cattle in the dry season at weekly or long intervals, they would significantly improve livestock productivity mm. <laughs> and help to alleviate poverty among the resource poor farmers. So I would want to, with this, with this in mind, I would like to encourage uh, farmers to sort of adopt these sort of practices, especially in areas where we do have spells of dry season, uh, as the, this will help to maintain the body weight. You can tell how much interest these animals are, are have on this particular plant. And this, is, this could be supplemented by using um, uh, veget uh, harvested vegetation like uh, uh, maize, maize crop, following maize crop, creating silage and then ensuring that we are also giving the animal molasses to increase the appetite. This can be used as a part of a combination with this uh, particular plant, the Decrusta starchy scenario. This is quite a healthy nitrogen fixing bacteria which also helps with the animal rumen. So this is an opportunity to just share with you some of the things that we could be doing in order to enhance our livestock.